the Timberwolves select Kevin Garnett from Farragut Academy. You saw the future of what basketball was about to become. There was that complete crossover between basketball and hip hop. The level of intensity is what stood out. Well, you're in your bed sleeping. Some people are work. He does whatever it takes to win a basketball game. I want them to know that I will fight. But then everything changed. I wasn't the same. I wasn't the same Kevin. So when you're a young player in the NBA, you're not prepared for this. What I did know is that I would be a bullseye, but it was what I needed to go to the next step. Ladies and gentlemen, I can't believe we got him on the show, HB, Tracy wow. G. Wow. This ain't your average guest right now. I know it for Facts. a fact. I've been around him. Just Facts. standing in his presence, my game improved. Oh, right, come on, Sway. Don't push it. Now you pushing it. Game you come pushing on, it. Hey, 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 HB, when you standing next to an NBA champion, an NBA most valuable player, a Hall of Famer, an NBA All-Star Game MVP, a 15-time NBA All-Star, NBA Defensive Player of the Year, two-time all M- Come on, man. When you standing next to a man who did a five-year extension for $126 million, your game automatically elevates. And he's the life game change. The life game change. He started with Clay. Look at him now. Anything is possible. Right. That's something I tell mm-hmm. all these kids when we talk. I always say anything is possible. And his new right. documentary premieres November 12th. Kevin Garnett, Anything Possible. It's going to be on Showtime. He's here with us right Crazy. now. KG! KG! Woo! Kev, what up? Hey, how, how y'all doing, man? How y'all What's doing, up, man? baby? What's Come up, on, family? Man. How y'all doing? What Come up, on, man? Baby? What up, man? Tracy on there, too, Kev. Tracy here, yes. F-G. Yes. Man. Yo, KG, first man. of all, first of all, I love you, man. Love yes. you, brother. Or me... ditto, back to you and Heather. I grew up on you and Sway. You know what I'm saying? All y'all, wow. man. Real talk. I'm real fans of y'all. Straight okay. Up. I'm glad you said that because... I always thought, man, K- KG must have grew up on us the way his attitude and energy is. No, <laughs> nah, nah, not I... at all. Not at all. Not at all. I'm, I'm gas. I'm sitting here listening to it, trying to stay calm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, listen, man, I'm trying to stay calm, man. One time we was at One Up um, together and we partied. Man, matter of fact, I want to feel like Ray Allen was with you. And we um, we all right. was at a club. Yeah, you really done, you done... I remember that. You remember that, and we partied, and I and I remember I watched how you partied. It was a it was a mild manner party. It wasn't like the basketball court party, you know. Like it was a no, mild, no. it was a conservative party, right? You, no, you, when I, when I, when, yeah, it, it was, but when I'm out, man, I'm head on swivel. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm, I'm chilling. I'm having a good time, but you know, I'm, you know, I'm head on swivel too. You know, I'm checking out everything. You know. You, you lay back. Let me ask you, man. I watched this documentary, and it was just such a treat going back in time, back to the mm-hmm. 90s when you, when you were the talk of the NBA before you even got in the NBA. And 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 I, and I always wonder, what was it like for a kid in high school to have the world be on, the, on your shoulders and everybody looking at you and these decisions that had to be made? And then you decided to go in the draft, and, um, mm-hmm. and, and, and you – Went into the NBA, man. What when you reflect back, when you watch this your own documentary, are you able to relate to the mindset you were in at that time when you made the decision to go into the draft? You know, it's crazy when you go back, man. It's like therapy. Doing this documentary was like therapy for me. Um, you know, when you win it, too, Sway. You know, when you're going through anything, you know, you win it. You know, you you don't really have time to actually <clears throat> reflect while you're doing it. But you know, I've one of the reasons I wanted to do this was not just to educate and inspire, but to reflect, you know what I'm saying? Like, I think the message for this whole, this whole project is to bet on yourself. And that's exactly what I did. I, when I reflect on it, man, uh, I knew I had a work ethic and I knew I wasn't afraid of work. And that's what I laid my hat on. But when I sit back and watch it on and I was looking at it and it was all put together and I was like, damn, I survived that. You know what I'm saying? Like Mm. I kept my head down. You know, I messed it up one or two times, but I got it back on track. And I never looked back after I got it back on track. I just kept my head down. And I kept working, and I believed in the work. And that's what kept me live for 21 years. But, yeah, it was, it was a crazy ride, if I'm being honest. Oh, man. Um, our, one of the things people will find out about, um, too, um, 
is even the grades, you know, at that time you were dealing with grade issues and you said those grades were like a fly on your neck. You know what I mean? Like, ah, man, we got to yeah. get these, te- these, not grades, these test scores. And when I was yeah. looking at that, Kev, um, I'm a person who started college and then I ended up um, leaving college, right? Um, right because right. even in, during grade school, I wasn't, the way we were taught, I feel like now and looking back, I think they needed different methods on how to teach us. It wasn't like we weren't intellectual enough or smart enough to learn these right. lessons. It was just the it was just the methods in which we were being taught. And a lot of times when that happens, a lot of us walk away and we feel insufficient or inadequate, you know, because we can't right. make the score. And that ain't necessarily right. the case. And so when I see the success you've had, not even I'm not telling people they don't they shouldn't go to college. I just say people should find a path that's right for them. But yeah. you never stop right. you never stop educating yourself. What I love about you too, man, is your business acumen. How how yeah. did you first start learning about business? What was one of your biggest teachers when it came to business? Well, being honest, my mom, man, my mom was a, a factory worker at a company called 3M for a bunch of years down in South Carolina. I'm a southern boy, you know, so we was raised from from the from straight from the womb knowing how to do two things, work your ass off and clean a whole house. <laughs> uh, my mom was a drill sergeant, you know what I'm saying? We was Jehovah Witness growing up, and we were very disciplined kids. My mom didn't play. There wasn't no mess around in school, and education was first in the house. So she was, mm-hmm. she left that job and then um, went to beauty school and became a beautician, opened up her own, and she always taught oh, wow. us to you know work for yourself, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Took out a little what we called a garage or what a storage unit, and just opened it up, put a couple of chairs, shampoo bowls in there, and she opened up her own shop. And that was the first time I got to really understand business and how to run one and or at least have a good idea um, to have my own ideas. And um, I, I think that was the first kind of inspiration for me. Oh. Um, when you come in through high school, man, they you know it's, it's evident that you're behind in what you know versus what people know already with players that are in the league already. So... Um, I want to be able to be in a position where I can learn as much as I can, as quick as I can. I'm a retainer. Um, when you say something to me, uh, I, I, it sticks to me, and I remember that versus anything else. Um, I'm a on, I'm a hands-on learner. Like when you show me something, uh-huh. and you show me one or two times, I, I never forget it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I stuck to that. So in ways where I lacked in some other ways in comprehending. I made it up on other things that, you know, I was really good at, and I stayed with that. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think even to this day, I'm always trying to learn something. I think yeah. that as people, we, we should continue to educate ourselves on anything. I don't think that you have uh, – I don't, I, I don't believe in just having a passion for one thing. I believe that if you focus on that one thing, it goes well. But people, human beings, we, we, we have many passions. I love music. I love <laughs> I love content. I love – I love I love fashion. I love colors. You know what I'm saying. So, mm-hmm. with all that said, you know I just never have stopped continuing to learn, even to this day. Every day I try to learn something new. I try to learn something about a language. I try to learn something off of something I didn't know, and I think that's important for growth. So I, I never stopped that day one. My Amen. man Kevin, Kevin Garnett, man, shout out the Content Cartel. All yeah. right, big ticket sports. Come on. Yep. He's doing a lot. Yep. You know, I remember, Kev, when, when, yep. when you signed Game one society, of them. All that. Gaming Society. Gaming Society was yep. so huge. Mm-hmm. It was so ahead of his time because I remember they used to show you, like, when you first came into the league, and then we'll, you know, sometimes we'll see, you know, clips of you playing video games, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> People was like, what are you doing playing video games? Shouldn't he be working out? <laughs> the, 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 the gaming industry is now worth billions of dollars, and you were one of, those, on it. one of those first – athletes to really show and unapologetically your involvement and investment in gaming. When did you decide to make it a business gaming? Um, well, coming in, uh, coming into the league, man, it was kind of the wave. Um, you know, I come from Atari. I come from Sega Genesis. I come from, mm. you know, Nintendo, all that. Right. So, you know, when you 18 and you come into the league, it ain't really a bunch of stuff you can get into. Meaning like we, you ain't really clubbing like that. You ain't really, rotating like that i was really trying to get like the lifestyle of the league down so i wasn't you know plus i was tired man you know we was practicing two times a day <laughs> three hour sessions uh each session and uh you're kind of wiped out but i had a, I had my friends with me so it made you know everything kind of um a little more smoother 
you know, having friends there, having familiar faces with you. And uh, what what began to, you know, become like a hobby or something we love to do, you know, guys talk talk trash, we, you know, we play the game, it's just mm-hmm. the nature. And then all of a sudden around like maybe 15, maybe 10, 15 years into it, man, I started to see gaming become like a real thing, just mm-hmm. like YouTubing, just like the internet, you know, the birth of kind of the internet brought up a bunch of different obstacles, uh, excuse me, brought up a different options and being able to do stuff. And I start seeing gaming uh, get funded through VCs, and I start seeing gaming, you know, start to uh, go into college where now you can get a degree. You can actually get a scholarship to college for gaming. I don't even think people know that. And, yeah, um, yeah it just seemed like the right thing to do, you know. And, and, and video games is like one of the things I was raised with. It's a natural it's a natural uh, love for me. So it just made sense. Man, my, uh, my gaming company is called Triumph. Shout out mm-hmm. to Triumph and all my gaming, all my gamers out there. Um, but yeah, it just made sense to you know divert and, and, and do something and diverse, and uh, right. with a passion that that I can easily be into, and it was a no brainer. You made more mm. money. You have to be Kevin Garnett. I made love more it. Money. I love it. <laughs> Look, Look I met yo. Me. I'm a super fan too, y'all. I love, I love, Listen, I love the way you flow, my real talk. Family, you don't love, even know uh, how much we could possibly be connected right now. So I, I'm about to take yeah. you back on a whole different level. Have you ever, do you even remember, because you have to solve a 20-year marriage mystery for me. Have you ever bought a man a pair of shoes? Do you remember this at all? Apparently, there's this legend about you. There's this legend about you, KG, that you spun a globe and you told you and your homies that wherever this globe lands, wherever your finger lands, you're going to go to this place except for Turkey. And somehow you ended up in Houston, Texas. When you got to Texas... Nas was there and not only was Nas there hanging out performing he was with his friend and his comrade horse you ended up hanging out with them and going on the shopping spree and you ended up buying horse from Queensbridge two pairs of Prada shoes at a mall and tried to get him a pair of shades do you remember this at all shout the horse yo in uh QB oh it's true <laughs> <laughs> yo, oh, KG, God. that's Man, a true be, story. That would be that's like oh three, that's like oh like two or something. Man, you went back in the archives. I'm gonna tell a, you why. I'm gonna tell story. you why because horse is not a flashy guy, but horse also happens to be my husband. I'm the one that's always oh. out buying shoes and boots, and when he came home oh. with these two pair of Prada shoes, he I was like, you buying Prada now? He's like, KG <laughs> bought these for me. I said, KG wow. who? He said, Kev, Kev Garnett, that's my man. Yo, KG, I'm trying to tell you, I rolled my eyes at who are so cold. I was like, one of these days I'm going to see Kevin Garnett. I don't know when, but I'm going to ask him this story. Fast forward, I saw you one year in Malibu. You was at a restaurant. You was with your family. I didn't want to bother you, so I kept it moving. I was like, the time will come around again. It is 2021, and damn it, you confirmed this story. I, I saved those Prada shoes of horses on purpose one day just to be able to take a picture of it. KG, you're a real dude, and I got to be nice to horse for the rest of my life now because it's uh, not a story. Yo, horse, horse KG, the you on the phone. Come upstairs. That's Come crazy, upstairs. Yo. He on the phone for real, live on the show. I'm yelling downstairs <laughs> now, horse, trying to tell him you on the phone. I'm dying. People, yo. yo, Tracy, it's, yo, this is KG, he on the live for real. He said, I took him back. You're pretty bold. KG with her big dog. That's <laughs> my guy right there. <laughs> good morning, good morning, everybody. Yo, what, what up, up boys? Right, peace, 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 man. How you been, bro? You been good? Oh man, yo, OBF, man. You know what I mean? Bye. I was down with, Bye. I was down with him for a long time, man. That's my guy long right there. Long time, long time, right? He's right, the best man. who ever I see did Esco it, doing man. his thing, yo, yo, he living, he, he looking good in everything, man. I'm happy for you, brothers, man. <laughs> Oh man, appreciate you, Queens. But you hear that the big guy happy for us, baby. We doing it out here. Yo, horse, you still got the Pradas? Horse, you still got the Pradas? Yeah, I really do, yo, KG. Like I never took nothing from no dude, but like honestly, like <laughs> I'm serious. Like KG, when I met him, he always just was like, yo, I be he be hearing stories about this, that, and the third. He's like, yo, I'm the right. best who ever did it. Trust me. And true facts, I'm yeah. serious. I don't know if this story, if you remember this, but when we was down there in Houston, 
the reason yeah. that they came to the reason they came to Houston, I'm serious, is because <laughs> the dude said, I'm gonna I'm spin the globe. I don't really feel like traveling far, but wherever my finger land, we going, yo. <laughs> that's how they went out to be used to it. That's real talk. I was like, word, that's wow. how y'all moving around here? I right. said, man, he's the best right. who ever did it, yo. That's what's up, I man. I got that from Sam Cassell. Yo, shout out to Sam Cassell for oh, giving yeah, me he that was, one, yo. Two S, two Ls, you know what I'm saying? He gave me that <laughs> one right there. We start, yep. we start. You know, I heard I heard cats were playing Monopoly for real money. I was like, let's play real spin the globe, you know, effort. You know what I'm saying? Right. Wow, yeah, that's, yeah. that's something that was, in that, that though, man. Time, that, man, that's something that's that's living right there, though. That's living right there, KG. Yeah. Where well, you yeah, can spend the times, man. Yeah, great times, I, man. Horse and Esco, real good people, man. They family, man. Every time I yeah. see them brothers, it's always consistent. You know what I'm saying? It's always love, real talk. That's what's Thank up, you, man. We got Kevin Garnett hanging out with us, man. I'm glad this uh, oh, this yeah. reunion just happened. Tracy, you want to ask a question? Uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey, Kev, it's Tracy. So happy, honored hey, Trace, to hear you your voice, King. I'm doing very, very Thank well. You. When you mentioned earlier of just how much of a sponge you are, you know, when someone says something to you that resonates, like it sticks and you take it with you throughout your entire journey. It took me to a moment in the doc that I found so intriguing and it was literally like 10 seconds, but that 10 seconds stayed with you forever. And it was um, the 1997 playoffs. Timberwolves versus the Houston Rockets. And it's what Charles Barkley had told you at the end of the game. Because I know you was yeah. heated as all hell. <laughs> you know, yeah. understandably so. And it was really about um, sportsmanship. You know, and him saying, yo, y'all y'all are going to be back here a thousand times. And I know at the moment you didn't want to hear it, And he pulled you in to make sure that that, that gem got dropped and you kept it. And I, I'm curious if you've ever had to pass down, not just that message, but that message in a similar manner to younger players that you were just facing off with on the court. Not all of them, not all the young kids, but when I see my, when I see a piece of myself in some, some young yeah. kid, you know, I give it up and, um, you know, I'll, I'll share those jewels, but not with everybody. Yeah. Um, you know, as an OG, man, <clears throat> I, I came under the act with having OGs and being able to go to them for solutions. And they told me the way that I give back is, is to be able to cuff a youngin and do the same thing. So I always felt compelled to be able to share jewels, you know, drop knowledge, soak it up, build with young, you know, young players, talk to them, be able to share, you know, certain situations, certain um, uh, obstacles that I was, I was able to get over, you know, you just, you know, you talk, yo, you, you get a lot through bills, you know what I'm saying? You know, conversating and being able to share information is big. So, you know, I've always felt compelled to be able to do the same thing uh, with some of the younger guys, but yeah, man, um, Barkley told us that we had to go through that and it was more about the journey and nothing's, mm. and nothing's, uh, given. You have to go earn everything. And Chuck, Chuck gave me those Jews and didn't have to say that, you know what I'm saying? And he came and sought us out. And kind of yanked us up, like, listen, y'all got to hear this. And so I looked <laughs> at it like, you know, he didn't have to do that. And that was blessed. That was one of the more uh, profound moments that I had in life that I that I actually applied to life. So, you know, big up to Chuck for that, man. <clears throat> Charles Barkley, a real one. Um, yeah. And, yeah, that stuck with me forever. Real talk. Right. Kevin Garnett is here, man. Uh, speaking of the doc, one of the pivotal moments in the doc, too, is your trade to Boston, you know, and – you know, Kev, I get a lot of hard times. You know, I'm from the town. I'm from Oakland, so naturally I'm a Warriors right. fan. You know you know what it is, right. man. And so pe- people tried to say the Warriors had the first super team, you know, um, with, you know, Clay and what, Heather? Steph and, <laughs> Not people. And, I said. Heather <laughs> and KD. But when you, Pierce, and Ray Allen came to the Boston Ooh. Celtics, come on, man, that was a super team. Right, you have three players that were just A-list elite players, you know. And with that team, you got a chance to experience an NBA championship. You've had one of the most decorated careers in NBA history, rightfully yeah. so. You are in the Hall of Fame and the NBA seventy-five team, uh, and all of those different accolades you got. As a player, though, I always wonder: is the career the same without the championship? When you look back, uh, the career is not the same without a chip. And um, I look at it like the chip is like having a, a big bowl of ice cream. Whether the, 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 the career is like having a big bowl of ice cream. 
And each time you get closer to the chip, it's like someone sprinkling whipped cream on that ice cream, okay? And when you get the chip, it's almost like the cherry on top to it all. Mm. It's like the, real, the, the reason why guys get in the league and actually we're all chasing the dream to become a champion and to have that moment because it really is a moment. And it's not too many times that you get back to those moments. I think players take those moments for granted sometimes thinking that, you know, you got here this year, you can get back next year or the year after that and you got time. It doesn't really happen like that. Chemistry, mm. so many different elements have to go into winning, so many – Things have to go right. You have injuries. You have so many things that can throw you left. So the fact that, um, you know, you get a chance, a chance, you get the opportunity to go in here and play for a championship with others that you've helped build. And, you know, y'all been battling through 82 game season plus preseason plus a playoff series that goes to about 30 games. So you're playing about 130, uh, 115 games all together. So you know, it's, it really weighs on you, and it's it's really a, a mental it's really a mental test, if, if real talk, because mm-hmm. you got to be prepared. And the one and in the playoffs, when you mess up one or two times, it can cost you the whole series. But I like to think that um, I've done everything you can do in the league. You know, what I'm saying I didn't win no MVPs in the of the finals or none of that, but I've experienced everything you can experience, highs and lows uh, that that has happened in the league, and I've survived it. And I was able to control my narrative. I was able to control my movement when I was a player. Mm-hmm. You know, I just wasn't going places and being thrown in the deals. I was actually, mm-hmm. uh, you know, ahead of my business and, and really controlled it. So, you know, I'm proud of what I've done, man. I've, you know, you should be. You know, when you when yeah. I first came into the league, man, they said I wasn't going to be in the league for a couple of years. So that drove me throughout 21 years of playing. And um, I feel like, you know, it's important for me to be able to share my experiences and share some of these hurdles and these obstacles that I was able to elude and, and, and get out of to some of this younger generation. And that's what this doc is about. You know, yeah. this, this, is the, this is the doc that push you to bet on yourself. That's what Amen. it is. Anything Amen. is possible yeah. out on Friday, Anything November the 12th on Showtime. Yeah, yeah but we're going yes, to see KG in the big three. Ha. No, you're never going to see KG in the big three, never. No, okay. but you might you might you, you might see me at a hoop it up game. You know what I'm saying? Shout to hoop it up. You know okay. what I'm saying? That's my that's my little basketball tournament. You know what I'm saying? That I like to go and actually I'm bringing hoop it up to Oakland. I'm trying to trying to bring hoop it up to Oakland. So I got to ask I'm coming up there to uh, the holler little D. Shout to little D up there. Shout to G Payton up there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I got to come up there and do some uh, do some uh, do some poly and uh, I got to come holler E40 about my little show. I got a show with uh, sir, uh, it's called Certified with Showtime. That's uh, that I'm coming up there grabbing some um, some dope content. Okay. Talking about the Warriors leaving Oakland and what it did to the community and stuff. So yeah, look for look, look for that. You feel me? Okay, yeah, yeah. Let me know if you need my commentary on it too. Hey, Jim, I'm here for you. Baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I got you, okay. I got you. All I'm right. gonna hold I, you to that too. I'm I, know, I got you. All love. I just took this number down. I'm gonna take one caller because I know you got to go. But they're from Boston. Yep. Uh, John and El Paso. Go ahead, man. Hey, John. What up, John? Yeah. Good morning. Great morning, man. You got a question for KG? Well, what up, first, John? I just wanted to say, KG, man, I was there in 2008 in Boston. If he don't come close, man, get on the phone, phone John. <laughs> what are you doing, man? <laughs> get on the phone. You playing, John? You playing, John? Put, John. L, put you know that what? L down. You man, put that L down, John. You there? Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, man. Say it. What get you want to say? I'm at, work. I'm at work. I apologize. Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. I was I was there in 2008. I loved every single minute of it. Thank you so much just for everything you did for Boston. Well, that's what's up, John. That's okay. what's up. And I want to thank Boston for and real. what Boston gave to me, man. Real talk. I appreciate every fan for in real. that moment. You feel me? Mm. All right, All right John. Right. Have a good day at work, John. You're a citizen. And Vanessa, Wait, you are final caller for Minneapolis. Go ahead, Vanessa. What's up, Vanessa? Hey, oh, what I'm up, so excited, KG. You don't know what you mean to me in Minnesota. I'm trying to not to be super emotional. Um, But anything is possible has been such a wonderful. Oh, I'm sorry I'm emotional, but I hope you guys feel anything is possible has been such a light for me um, in Mm. growing my life, in growing my business here in Minneapolis. Um, I know you were really tight with Prince, and I know that he respected you so much, and just from Minnesota, 
you and everybody, I think you've been such an inspiration to so many people, and I'm just so thankful for you and the sport. Um, wow. So thank you. Oh, uh, thank you. I'm, I'm glad wow. I was able to bring some energy and bring light to this whole thing. I'm glad I was able to inspire you. I'm, that's what's up. I, I still live in Minneapolis, so, yeah, shout to Minnesota, shout to the state, shout to everybody there. That's what's up. All right. Pleasure thank to meet you. Awesome. Thank you. Take care, Vanessa. And, and I can't then, wait. Have a great day, Vanessa. What? I would I was right, just going to say, one day I'm going to get you some of my cheesecake. Okay, that's what's okay, up. You're, that's what's up. That you're a citizen, that's Vanessa. That's that's Vanessa. That's 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 Kev, one quick Prince story before you go, man. Anything you could tell us about Prince? What's a crazy moment you had with him? A mind-blowing moment. Uh, crazy, cr- real, real shit. Cr- uh, uh, Prince knew his basketball, like straight up and down. We was in a club one night, <laughs> and uh, his bodyguard came and got me and, and a couple of my homies that was with me, G. Trent. I had a couple with Sam Cassell. I had some guys with me. And we sat back there and talked basketball for like three hours. Like he loved basketball. And I didn't know he can hoop. I didn't know he was fast. I didn't know he was quick. He played. He loved Iverson. Iverson was his his number one, you know, like his number one player that he loved. Every time we played AI, he would always come to the game, check it out. Prince was dope. He was, man, I'm talking wow. about like super, like super dope person, man. Great heart, uh, 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 advocate worker, uh, compulsive worker, and just always on it. You know what I'm saying? Shout out wow. to the artist, man. Rest in peace. Real talk. Rest in power. Real. And KG, Kevin Garnett. Mm-hmm. Jeff, Kevin Garnett, man, you're a king, brother. You're a yes. king, man. And Appreciate we appreciate yes. you, man. And you're such a great inspiration you, to young and people who are older than you. I got you by a couple of years, Bye. Kev. But you know you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I can't wait to see you in person, family. Yes, family. All right. Yes. What's up? All What's right, up? Thank Kevin. You, Thank you, brother. Absolutely. Of course, family. Of course. Right. Thank you. Kevin Garnett, anything is possible Friday, 8 p.m. Showtime. Make sure y'all watch it. Be safe, family. Love you. Kev just saved my marriage, y'all. 20 years. (laughs) New job alert for Kevin Garnett, marriage counselor. Let's go, Kev. (laughs) I'm proud of you. All right, peace, family.